We all share a common interest. This crazy position that's centered on competition, power, angles, and speed. This is the largest overnight face-off camp that's ever been held. Our staff was composed of six current pros, as well as six current college standouts at the Division I level. To be able to put this group of players and people together with just an interest in making these kids better. I think that alone is super unique. A ton of different coaches here, current college guys, current pro guys. Everyone here has a different style, even all the coaches. We, we've taught you a different thing. Each time we rotate, one of us has said something different than the other person. If you come to this camp and you stick to one, one thing that you do, right, you're wrong. You're, you're getting taught by some of the best guys in this position. Take one thing away from each coach at this camp, and it'll be a 10 times better face-off guy. When you leave here, you're not just going to be better if you're not working, okay? All the guys up here right now, they'll tell you, countless hours working on their own, working on their craft, that's what got them here, right? You have to work hard and want to be better to get where you want to be. Biggest mistake you can make is being afraid to make one. When we come here, we come here to meet new people from different parts of the country, take bits and pieces of what the coaches teach you, and you put yourself out there, things are going to work out for you, right? Getting better does not end at 2 o'clock today. You keep going, you keep building. You got to keep working at it on your own, because you're not just going to continue to get better by not doing anything. If you guys want to get better, you need somebody else to do so, right? Nobody got great on their own, especially not at this position. This camp is what we're most proud of. And it's kind of transpired um, through really a culmination of six or seven years of me committing to really studying, learning, and teaching the face-off position with a goal to make the next generation a little bit better. This is the largest overnight face-off camp that's ever been held. The staff was composed of six current professionals and six current Division I student-athletes. Um, due to NCAA rules, we don't advertise or promote any of those guys, but th these guys know who they are. I want to thank them for taking their time in the summer where they could be doing plenty of other things. They could be training, getting ready for the upcoming season, but for the, to us to have those guys there and, and these kids and campers, to be able to really see what the guys right above them at the next level that they're all aspiring to get to are like, how they conduct themselves, their mannerisms, and how they behave was huge, and I think it was super inspirational for each of the students students at camp. Something like this just simply wasn't available to any of us. And I think one day these kids will look back and realize how special the opportunity was to work with such great coaches and such great people. Right now we're gonna do a little balance test. Because all you guys know, when we pop that ball out, we're constantly getting pushed in different directions. And it's really important that we maintain our feet and are able to keep our eyes up while we're getting pushed. You want to take over, show them the balance stuff? So hey, we're going to do just one thing, it's really easy. We'll go on our left foot. Andy is my father and brings a really unique approach to stretching. 
core strength and balance, all of which I think have really made me the athlete I am today. And these kids all, by the end of the camp, are even asking for more out of the stretching, the balance, the core work. They know it helps them, they see the difference, and I think he adds a really special element to camp. Hey, what's the most important area on your body to stretch? Who knows? It's not the legs. Huh? It's not the back. Your neck. I get little flashbacks of what it was like. We had a home gym, me just getting tortured up in the barn and seeing snippets of that and some of the stuff that I went through and these kids experiencing the same thing and having a little bit of fun with, with it makes me really happy. They know it sucks, they still do it with a smile on their face and they know it makes them better. So at the end of the day, they welcome it and they, they accept all the coaching and for that. I'm really thankful to have him there as well as the kids approach our, our camp with a really open mind. Four, you're gonna be with us. You didn't get it yet because you were a little later? Yeah. Alright. We broke the groups up by age and ability. Kids were shuffled around accordingly so we can uh, we can mix and match and make things appropriate. But I felt that this provided the best learning experience possible at a face-off camp with 75 students. We're going to focus on for this first segment. In this session entirely, we're calling it fundamentals, right? For you guys to be great face-off guys, and you can ask any of these guys who all, all have had success at high school, college, and some of the pro level, you got to master the fundamentals if you want to take the next step, all right? So I know a lot of you guys have been here before. A lot of you guys have trained with some of our coaches. I ask you that you humble yourselves and just really focus on being great at this. I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, it's boring. I've done down the line a million times. Guess what? I've done it a million times too, and I still do it every time I practice. All right? You can never get good enough at the basics. Anybody know who John Wooden is? Huge fundamental guy, arguably the best coach ever. If you don't know who he is, shame on you. Look him up. You see All right? Get with your coaches. We got 20 minutes, then we're going to change the subject. Cool? Let's go, group four. The size of this year's staff made camp very unique and allowed me as the director to kind of get very creative with our with our lesson plan. Not real here, right? So when we go down the line, whether it's two hands or one hand, on my snap, I'm bringing my head down with me and snapping everything. We started with mastering the fundamentals. That's, uh, that's my stance. Yeah, it's preference, boys, so whatever you guys like, but at the end of the day, you don't want to be choking your stick. You want to be comfortable so you can react. Now, the next thing we're going we're gonna to work on is our clamp. Guys, when we clamp, now that everyone knows that the rules What we were able to do with a staff of 12 was break the kids up into six groups and each group had two coaches which i thought was awesome because each coach could kind of work off one another bounce ideas back and forth one guy could run, run the whistles while the other was doing some film stuff showing the kids what they were doing right and wrong and just having that bird's eye view on each session but, all right we're pushing off our toes we're getting off our right knee this whole week every single time you clamp you should be coming off that right knee okay so every step we do it's going to be down set Whistle. And we all focused on the same topic during each segment. So as the kids cycled through, they got to hear different takes on what everyone thought based on each subject. So one, one group's learning experience was a little different from the next, which I think is awesome because that made everyone's camping experience unique to themselves, to their group, and to their coaches. So if I got my nice wide base on my feet, my head and shoulders are down low, I can see the ball, all right, and start rotating like that. But that all starts, okay, with dropping the head and shoulders as we drive in. On day two, we kind of took a step forward. So this session, as I said, called taking the next step. Rarely when we go against somebody good are we winning every single plant clean, correct? Correct. Correct, right? So what is the next part of the face-off? Rotations. Rotations, tie correct? 
Like, what is the best way to advance stop? strategy? Tie ups. Because the ball is nice in his throat, and then he's got this left hand punch, which is pushing my stick away. You how to get our plastic underneath somebody else's? How to counter? Good job, John. A little bit lower with that hand. Yeah. That hand. I'll come back more. How to read and react before yeah. the whistle, during the face off, as that face off is beginning to conclude. How do we plan for the next steps? No, right? I want to hold. I think all of the kids kind of saw how detailed this position really is. Right? So if I want to change up my angle because I may not be being as successful, that's when I can come with maybe a little more pressure on those gloves and lift up versus my normal staying low and driving down that line. Good. How much goes into being great? And how to go about practicing and really learning to get there. And I thought that was special. To finish up, what we're gonna do, we'll spend about half the time this session as kind of our last seating round for the individual stuff. All right, and a lot, you guys have gone against these guys now on three different occasions. And obviously we bumped a few guys up and down, but the reason we keep score is not only so you guys can keep track of how you're doing, versus everyone else, but you can track your progress, right? So if you won two, there's a couple of guys, they won two, three reps in the first round. Third round, they're winning two out of five or three out of five rounds, right? That's significantly greater percentages. And based on the two out of three series, we're shooting for that 60% mark in each of those um, series, I should say, against our opponent, right? So we do that for a reason. And if you guys can progress throughout camp, that means one, you're working harder than the guys around you if you're getting better than they are in a shorter amount of time. But two, if you guys aren't progressing or you're doing worse, you gotta seek help, right? Not everyone can do this on their own. If you guys could all face off on your own or any of us could all face off on our own, no one would practice with each other, no one would take reps, and you guys wouldn't come to camps like this. And these guys wouldn't come coach something like this to learn themselves, right? So what I ask all you guys to do in this last series, really take a long look at yourself and analyze how you like think you're progressing over these two days. We have two more sessions after this one. This is the last kind of instructional session that we're going to be doing. So I know it's ground balls and stick work and it's hot as hell out, but I really ask that you guys stay engaged for probably 30 minutes. You guys can give me 30 minutes, right? And then we'll finish with about 30 to 45 minutes of live reps. We'll reveal the teams for tonight's uh, team competition, which all the coaches are really pumped about. I hope you guys are too. And then we'll have a ton of fun tonight. Tomorrow will be competition mode. And uh, for the prizes for tomorrow, just so we know what's on the line, we got some STX Duo full sticks for you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah! My team, <clears throat> myself, me and uh... On the second night, we did our team tournament and the coaches conducted a draft. Oh, your name. I got, I got oh, name. We are Team No Sleeves. Team No Sleeves. We are Team Big Ten. We are Team Grit. My squad, no name. On the Thick Boys, we got Rowe, <laughs> Schaefer, <laughs> Park, Dixon. Call each coach was placed with a partner, so we matched each, each of our six pros with our six college coaches. Shit. And we went at it. Hey, he's pulling air, he's pulling air right now. Pull it out. Hey! Counter, counter. Hey, Riley! Counter. Hey. Yes, he's behind you. Drew, you ride. Drew, you ride. Rotate, rotate. Team on team. Go, go, let's go. Go, go, let's go. Go, go, let's go. Oh, good kick. Right out, right out, right out, right out. Oh, yeah, pull it, Neil. Oh, yeah, pull it, Neil. Oh, yeah, pull it, Neil. With one final victory. Coach May and Coach Anoni's team took home the crown. Still bitter about it, but I think if you ask any of our students, the team competition is arguably one of the most fun things that they will ever do. 
as a face-off guy, you never get to root for somebody else. And to root for somebody that you're, you're going to be going against tomorrow is pretty special. It allows you guys to develop a different dynamic to your relationship, a special bond that I think it's often we don't find because we're, we're constantly being forced to root for ourselves given the nature of what we do as face-off guys. Run down little words of wisdom. Anything you want to say to these guys before you wrap up camp? Because some of them, some are going to be leaving before 12. So we wanted to get this stuff done first, and then strictly business with the competition. All right, we that. All right, so I'll start. Right, so right, you have a ton of different coaches here. Current college guys, current pro guys, right? And all you guys, high schoolers. Everyone here has a different style. Even all the coaches, right? We we've taught you a different thing. Each time we rotate, one of us has said something different than the other person, right? If you come to this camp and you stick to one one thing that you do. Right, you're wrong. You're, you're getting taught by some of the best guys in this position. Take one thing away from each coach at this camp, and you'll be a 10 times better face-off guy. Right? Combine all your skills and all the different things you learn, right? and you don't have to use everything that everyone taught you, but if you take one or two little tidbits, you make your game that much better. Right? Thanks, coach. <clears throat> all right, boys, so we worked hard for these past two days, OK? We learned a lot. And I uh, just got one little quote that I read the other day. The biggest mistake you can make is being afraid to make one. So just put it all on the line today and kick ass. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> guys, just want to start off by saying that it was an absolute pleasure coaching you guys. I had so much fun. Um, guys, we're competing today. So just make sure that you uh, that getting better does not end at 2 o'clock today, right? keep going you keep building right you got to keep working at it on your own because you're not just going to continue to get better by not doing anything right so stick with it and uh and keep this ball rolling after this competition okay all right guys i just want to say something that's kind of like always stuck with me kind of throughout when i started facing off and then as i started to have success as the years came by so one thing is really just to kind of always give back there's always people that helped you out, and they could have took the time to do much other other things, and they've worked with me countless hours. I remember all my mentors, coaches, and I know just to thank them, just always thank them of how much time they put into getting, making me a better player and a better person. So don't forget to give back. Once a coach gives something to you, you you hand that down to the next generation. So make sure you're always giving back. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, guys, it was a great week. Uh, like. Just gonna touch base with Coach uh, Dad said. It's a bunch of different styles here, a bunch of different guys who do it uh, the best at the position, right? You learn, you leave here, you learn a bunch of little things, right? You come here, it's a learning experience, right? If you're not winning that many faceoffs, it's okay. Because when you leave here, you're gonna be a better person. A uh, better person, you're gonna be a better faceoff guy. And when you leave here, you're not just gonna be better if you're not working, okay? All the guys up here right now, they'll tell you, countless hours working on their own, working on their craft, that's what got them here, right? You have to work hard and want to be better to get where you want to be, okay? But good job. Take all the little things, all the different styles, all the little moves, counters, tricks that you learned, and keep working on it, right? Keep working on different styles, stand up, knee down, all right, different moves, right? Because when, when you mess around working on little different things, right, you get better, right? Because you just learn and continue to learn, okay? So good job. Mm -hmm. Good luck. First off, just thank your parents. Um, I mean, there's 75 kids here. There's a lot more that want to be here. So, I mean, I would have been lucky to go to a camp like this when I was young. And, I mean, a lot of you guys, some of you saw success this week. Some of you guys had, well, some trouble. But, I mean, when I first started off taking face-offs, I think I was literally, like, 25% my first summer. Like, I think that was my freshman year in high school. So, I mean, a lot of it, it's not how you do here. It's, like, what you learn. And just trying to get better and making improvements. Um, as all the other coaches said, it doesn't stop like past two o'clock. This is kind of like a building block, and like you gotta use that to keep growing. I mean, you know, Coach Nard, reach out to him, like keep in touch with him, keep doing lessons, work hard, enjoy your summer. But at the end of the day, you gotta still like you can't just go and throw your stick in the closet until the next cross season comes around because you're just not gonna get any better. So I mean, all you guys right now, it seems like you love the sport, and if you really wanna excel at it and do well, you gotta keep working hard and uh, so sought out people that are gonna help you. I mean, all these coaches here, if you get a chance, thank all of them. Um, I mean, everyone brings something different to the table. And I mean, I don't really think there's a collection of coaches that have had as much success as all of us combined have had up here. I mean, everyone's different. No one tries to tell you there's a right way or a wrong way, but it's just kind of your way. And you gotta find, find your path and find how you do things and what works for you. 
So um, just reach out to us. Um, it was an honor to coach you guys, and uh, could have been happier with how it turned out. So. Yeah, baby. <laughs> you guys had fun? <laughs> How many of you guys have been here for three years? This is your third year. Anyone fourth year? No? Look, we come to these things. This is great. I mean, I'm, first of all, thank you for letting me be here. You know, it's, it's been an honor. I love coming here. I love meeting new kids. I love seeing the same faces, you know, year in and year out. But just piggybacking off what everyone says, when we come here, we come here to meet new people from different parts of the country, from you know, I'm from California, so I know what it's like to grow up around not exactly, you know, the lacrosse hotbed, right? But when you meet these new people and you, you take bits and pieces of what the coaches teach you, of, you know, what you know from the past, it's, it's as long as you're open to learning new things and you put yourself out there, things are going to work out for you, right? So, you're done. I just want to say uh, thank you guys for coming out and um, like they all touched on, just stay grateful because uh, this definitely goes by fast. So, thanks guys. <laughs> and yeah, same thing guys. Thanks for coming out. Um, if I can leave you with one piece of advice, I hear a lot of you guys, what do you guys call yourselves? Are you guys midfielders or pogos? Thick boys. Thick boys, sure. <laughs> sure. But what do you guys call yourselves? What should you call yourselves? Midfielders, right? Face off, right? So I was kind of messing around with Coach Nards the other day when I was watching the Bayhawks Lizards game. Quint kind of was making fun of Coach Nards because I guess at the All-Star game, they were kind of, he was kind of breaking it down with the attackman about what kind of break they were going to run so maybe he could potentially get a shot or something else. And Quint basically said, you're a Fogo, just move the ball and get out, right? We shouldn't have to do this. Again, we kind of talked about it yesterday, and especially if you were in my group when I was getting a little heated, right? A lot of you guys take kind of these drills softly and even if you don't know what you're doing, just go at it as fast as you can, okay? Because again, like, if you go talk to Coach Stillman, Coach Stillman's thing with Maryland is, which what makes Maryland so good is, if there's a ground ball, who's going 100% for the ground ball? On Maryland. On, in practice, who's going to get it? Is it 50-50? Yeah. yeah, every single time, right? Because both guys are going 100%. When we get to the game, what ends up happening? Most of the time. Whoever works harder gets the ball. Whoever works harder gets the ball, right? Generally, it's us. So, this is the thing for, I, I think, for the most part, I think like if you guys just work on some of that outside stuff that you're not comfortable with, again, a lot of you guys look really good facing off, but then your six skills, some of you guys are really good, some of you guys need work. Work on your weaknesses. Always work on your weaknesses. Guys, real quick, just going off that, um, make my speech a little more face off specific. Look, these drills that we're showing you guys, that Joe is bringing to you guys, we didn't have this six years ago, seven years ago, you know, when, when we were learning. Joe made these from him and I facing off for hours a day, hours. All summer, we had lacrosse in the fall, lacrosse in the spring. We had our summertime and we were traveling the country, coaching kids like you, facing off against each other. But we would just take live face offs and we would say, hey, what are the biggest problems that we're having and how are we gonna solve these problems? And we would find drills to figure that out, right? I mean, it's just, we would just play around with it. So that's, this is years of evolution of drills that we're bringing to you guys, but nothing is gonna be Perfect, right? So again, just go on and put yourself out there. Just take reps, as many reps as you can, as often as you can. That's the best thing you can do for yourself, right? Cool. Good. All right, and I'll wrap it up. I got two things for you guys. Number one, well, first off, I had a great time coaching you guys. I hope you guys had a lot of fun and learned a lot of this week. But first and foremost, if you guys want to be great, find two or three of your buddies who are competitive, who are going to challenge you, and who are mean as hell, right? If you guys want to get better, you need somebody else to do so, right? Nobody got great on their own, especially not at this position. So my best piece of advice is when you get home, even if you have a buddy who's maybe not as good as you, every time you take reps, bring two, three, four people. And you guys should be constantly talking, critiquing, analyzing, and helping one another get better. But by facing off with other guys who are like-minded, that's how you're gonna elevate your success as fast as possible. And then second, and a lot of the like coaches kind of touched on this, be grateful for the opportunity. You had TD said it, Coach Woodall said it, thank your parents, right? There's so many kids who would want to do something like this. I would want to do something like this if I was your guys. And you guys have the opportunity to do so, right? So to make the most of it, take advantage of it. And on the token of being grateful, I'm super great. Like one thing when I tore my, my knee, it made me really appreciate a lot of the little things that we have, right? I'm super grateful. I grew up in a household where I was, I kind of learned how to work with young people, how to coach, how to teach. 
right? And what you guys should be grateful for is the opportunity to ha play this game, play this position, meet all these great people. And my best advice would be to thank everybody around you. Appreciate all the little things. Every face off you get to take with one of these guys critiquing you, make the most of it. Ask these guys questions. Appreciate every little thing in your life and you'll start to view life a little bit differently. All right? You guys ready to do this thing? Yeah. Hey, so we're gonna go quick warm up. You guys wanna you guys need to stretch it out or you guys wanna go yeah. face off warm-up? Yeah. Who wants a good stretch? Yeah. How about we go nice, yeah. nice little dynamic stretch? Everybody on the 50, you don't need your gear. Yeah. Make some noise, boys. Yeah. Pump it up! Oh yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The last day we hosted our signature double elimination competition. Oh, oh. And at the end of each session throughout camp, all six sessions, we did individual reps and every time it was counted. because whenever you're facing off in a game, the scoreboard's on. Those reps at the end of each session determined our seed. So whoever did the best throughout those sessions had the best chance or best placement within their bracket. And why we do the seeding is not, not to just measure yourself against one another. But it gives you a chance to track your progress, to see if you can get better. To see if you can work harder and outprogress your peers. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And by doing so, and by providing this competition, we gave these guys a platform to try to be the best. All right, bring it up, boys. All you guys, make sure you thank your parents. If you guys see anybody from STX, thank them too. They hooked us up this week, they did a great job. Division three. You want the black one? Division two. There you go. Division one. Make sure you guys nice get pictures, stretch. make sure you guys thank STX. But what I want to say about the competition, hey, our competition up? is not a measure of your hey, success. It's not a measure of your success this week, right? Winning and losing, yes, it, it's important in all different facets of life. And it's fun to win, obviously, and it really sucks to lose. But whether you got better this week or whether this week was a success is not determined if you won the competition. It's if you did a little bit better than the first day. If you made a couple more friends, right? If you felt a little bit comfortable with what you're doing on the field, a little more confident in yourself, right? That would mean that this week was a success. However, competition is always a great way to test ourselves, right? A great way to see how we stack up. So depending on where you stacked up today and how you thought you stacked up the first day, if you did a little bit better, if you progressed a little bit, that's a really good job, right? That would mean you were success this week. <coughs> We have a couple more minutes before we get out of here, so if any of you guys want to challenge any of the coaches, we could do one last round. Oh, oh yeah! Oh my gosh. Not only is the is the training on the field really special to us coaches, but the camaraderie and the ability to share a living space with some, with our students for three days is what really makes camp fun in my opinion. It allows all of us coaches to kind of feel like we're kids again and it also allows the kids to fully immerse and learn everything they want or need to know about us coaches. They have the ability to ask us absolutely anything from stringing sticks to mindfulness, how to meditate, how you prepare for games. We watched film together, we played Xbox with these guys, we ordered pizza, we lived with these kids and they were able to breathe our lifestyle for three days. And I think them getting a glimpse into our lives is the, one of the biggest reasons a lot of these guys come to camp. And it's always fun to see who the characters are that are running around late at night 
who's snack eating, and who's really just enjoying themselves and being kids and I think that's one unique thing about doing an overnight camp is you get to see these kids in such a different light that you never see on the field that you become so much closer to them as people and they really start to see you as mentors and teachers not just coaches and they see you as, as family members that they know they can ask you anything for the rest of their lives. And that's why at Faced Off Factory, we call it the FO family, because we feel like we incorporate these kids and bring them into our family throughout camp. You get accommodation, you get food, you get world-class coaches, uh, and everyone here is really nice. Well, it's an elite coaching staff, and the duration of the camp, the three days, you learn everything, and a counter to everything, it's just all around. It's just, you learn everything from your stance all the way up to the best counter. I think the coaching here is kind of unmatched. I don't think you can get a better group of coaches. So I learned more in the first day here than I did all of last year. They really focused on making us complete players. I don't know, just the kids you meet, there's a lot of, there's kids from like probably 15 other states, so building those relationships, I really like that.